right. Go, Josie. There's a bunch of rabbits in here, buddy. <laughs> this week on Kentucky Field. You got that one, didn't you? Yeah. Rabbit season is now open statewide, and we're not sure who's more excited for it, us or the Beagles. Good job. And they run that one a minute, you know? Yeah, they did. Next, much of the state saw snow on opening day of modern firearm season this year, and that is one of our favorite conditions to hunt in. I might have to raise it up just a bit. Then, cold weather means big fish on many of the state's reservoirs, and we're breaking out the kayaks and searching for them with Christine Fisher. Got one. It's all next on Kentucky nice. Field. Woo! Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> Say Leo. Yeah, look at the keeper. Here it goes. Boom. Oh. Oh. Wow, that happened fast. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. One of my favorite hunting opportunities is rabbit hunting, and right now it is open here in Kentucky statewide. I'll tell you what, November 1st out here in Henry County, you know what that means. Rabbit season. Opening day of rabbit season here in the eastern part of uh, uh, Kentucky. You know, out of all the hunting season comes in, this is the one I look forward to the most. <laughs> Um, you know, deer season, archery, I love it, but it couldn't be hot. You know what, the dogs are ready. I've been looking forward to this for a while now. And my dogs have been out for a little bit. I know you've had yours out a little bit. A little bit, not, not a whole lot, but hot and dry. Makes it hard on them, hard Plus on me I, too. I've known you for a while. Actually, Josie came from one of, one of your dogs here today. And uh, I know that you're an avid outdoors person. And I know you're a, an avid houndsman as well. That's right. So this, uh, this is one of those days where you can get your dogs out and turn them loose and actually carry a shotgun and finish out some of these chases. It's pretty special, isn't it? Yes, sir. Tell me who you got with you today. This is uh, John Payne, friend of mine. Okay. We hunt together a lot. Nice to meet you, John. You I know too, that uh, this is a piece of property that, uh, that is, your family owns, or I appreciate you letting us come out today. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for coming out. Well, I tell you what, I, I'm super excited. I know these dogs are ready to go. I say we turn them loose, and uh, right here looks beautiful. I mean, this, this spot right here just looks fantastic. Let's turn them loose, and we'll catch up and talk some more, and I'm sure there'll be some teasing going on, because I don't, I don't plan on hitting them all, do you? Uh, no. <laughs> First one to miss is by his lunch. All right, I just won't shoot for it until one of you guys miss. So, uh, let's turn them loose and uh, let's let's start right here. Go. All right. Go, Josie. There's a bunch of rabbits in here, buddy. Hunt them up, Josie. Where they at, Josie? Hunt them up, Josie. Not today, Peter Cottontail. It's a good start. There he is. What do you do? Turn and go back in? Yeah. I didn't know where Josie was at, and I did I, when I went to take that shot. I just didn't know where all the dogs were at. I'm gonna kill that rabbit. I see it. Not now. A big rabbit. Yeah, I'm going to score him. Little buck. Okay, oh. There he goes. How many pictures you want to see of him? <laughs> yeah, we got unicorns up here. Yeah, you do. Rabbit right in there. You got that one, didn't you? Yeah. 
Come out behind me. I know it. He come out right behind you. <laughs> Good shot. Hey, Good job, guys. Good job, Arlo. Arlo. Good job. And they run that one a minute, you know. Yeah, they did. Put a good shot on it too. It's I tell you what, we knew it was coming that way, and I just happened to be turned like just like this, and it shot out right here. Gave you a great opportunity. Nice shot, man. Thanks, buddy. Good Dog job. did great on that good job. rabbit. Good job, Checkers. You started that one. Good job. He jumped the fence right here. <laughs> this number three. You get ready to throw in my vest. There you go, nice job. That rabbit got pushed in a big circle and it was coming right back. That rabbit was jumped right here and you shot it around the outside of the fence. Coming right back over the jump. We stayed close and you were smart enough to go, hey, you know what? I've seen this game before. I know where he's going and I'm gonna cut him off. Here he is. I got him. Well, those dogs finally ran this uh, rabbit up out of this bottom here, and it's real thick in here, as you can see. And I got a shot and had to try, try to take a second shot be before I got behind this tree. We got it, though. Dead, dead. Hey, hey, hey. Good girls. Good girls. Come here. Good boy. Good boy. I was waiting on it to jump again behind the tree because I wasn't sure if you hit him or not. I was behind the tree, and I was out of ammo. And then I was like, well, he ain't moving. He didn't come to the left, so he had to hit him. <laughs> Well, Dustin, I believe our dogs have about had it. <laughs> done, buddy. Yeah, well, you know, opening nice. day, uh, how many miles they ended up running? Over 10, 12 uh, at one time. 12 yeah. on top of the ridge. Almost 13 is what we finished out so with. So 13 miles. So, hey, for day one, you know, they ran a ton. And I do believe if one of us would have just sat right here on the back of the truck, we'd have got our limit in about 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, right out the tailgate, man. <laughs> we, jumped, we jumped a lot of rabbits. We run a lot. We ran Big a lot. Big running today. Big running. Yeah, a lot of runs. Uh, they brought them by us numerous times before we could get, get the rabbit on the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, they'd run by and then it'd take a big loop and come by us again, but you couldn't see it. It's so thick. But hey, I'd rather hunt a thick area and have the dogs run a lot and see fewer rabbits than hunt wide open and see zero rabbits. Exactly. You figure out why those dogs are so tired when you get in those briar thickets and try to pull through them yourself. You go, yeah, wow. Tough. You know, we're tired. We probably didn't walk two miles. Yeah. The dogs went 13 through the briars. Yeah. That's, that's the difference. It is amazing. You know, they call them working dogs for a reason. That's right. Today, they work. And by the end of the year, 12, 13 miles won't seem like a lot. But on day one, that's a lot of running. Yes, sir. Hey, it's a lot of fun. Thank you, guys. When you get the opportunity to deer hunt with snow on the ground here in the state of Kentucky, well, that's an opportunity you don't want to miss. Well, we just got here for morning two of our, of our deer or modern firearm season, and wow, the conditions have changed. Uh, we passed on a couple of does and had a couple of bucks in here yesterday, but since then the temperature has dropped 30 degrees, maybe 40 degrees. It's snow on the ground. And unfortunately where we were set up, we were about 200 yards away from where the deer were crossing. With the way the wind is this morning, it would be really tough to be sitting in a tree with the tree swaying to try to, to try to lock onto a deer. So we know our backstop here pretty well and it's completely safe to shoot on the ground. So we're gonna set up and hopefully get a stable shot and it should be in the 100 yard range or less. So sometimes you gotta make adjustments and with this wind, setting up in a swaying tree, making a long shot is not something I wanna do. So change of plans. <laughs> right where the deer are at, and they pop out of the woods right up underneath the set we were in yesterday. I got two right there beside each other. I don't accidentally shoot two. It's not even fully fully bright yet, so we're gonna have a chance to get another deer if we hold still. I couldn't get a shot. Right there, head down facing us. Between here and that cedar tree, there's a deer standing there facing us. About 140 yards away. It's a doe. Here comes 
another one, dude. Coming out of the woods right there, you see him? I'm gonna have to raise it up just a bit. You tell me when. I think that's a pretty good shot. We'll go retrieve that deer, but I'll tell you, this this landowner that farms this property is having major problems with deer. So we're gonna give that deer 20 or 30 minutes. And if another deer comes out, I'd like to make a donation to Hunters for the Hungry. Talk to them about bringing a deer over. So if another one pops out, we'll take a second if we get a chance. That's a spike. We thought this would be a great chance to get a deer for the hunters of the hungry. I set up on it and it looks like it's got about four inch antlers. So we're gonna let that one go. It should be right in here somewhere. Okay, here we go. Got a pretty good amount of blood here. It's a pretty good sign. Oh yeah, here we go. Got a pretty good trail right here. Oh yeah. I'll tell you what, tracking a deer in the snow, a little bit easier. She came right through here, and there she lays. Wow, <laughs> what a big doe. Look how big that thing is laying there. That's a really, really nice doe. What a big, healthy, Doe. Oh my gosh. It's been a rough go, but this makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> I've been wanting a doe. We, uh, we eat a lot of backstripes in our family, and we grind a lot for burger, and uh, the kids have been wanting some summer sausage. There's nothing better, in my opinion, to be out on the boat and have a midday snack with some summer sausage or get some out in the middle of a rabbit hunt, which is right now. So I want to make summer sausage out of this deer and put it to good use. I am super, super excited to have it. We're going to get this one here squared away, get it to the processor. After a lot of bad luck, this ended up coming together and I am happy to have this deer. What a big, nice doe. Wow. Thank God we can get the truck close. After deer season wraps up here in the state of Kentucky, there are some unique cold water fishing opportunities that I start considering. And you don't need a big boat to do it. So Christine, where are you from originally? I am from the little town of Weeping Water, Nebraska. Nebraska. We've got about 800 people, 801, <laughs> something like that. What got you into fishing? Is there a really good lake to fish there local? Oh no, um, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> oh heck no. No, um, my whole family, oop, there was one right there, hold on a second. Get a bite? Yeah. Oh, it feels like a good one. Yep, good fish. Big small mouth. Woo. Very nice. Woo. You found that grass edge. <laughs> Man, look at that beautiful fish. Very nice. I'll tell you what, that's what Del Hollow is known for right there. That's a healthy fish. God, love it. Uh oh, here we go. Finally got one hooked up here. And you didn't flip the kayak on the hook sack. That's a that's a huge <laughs> hey, I, win. I've got a fish on it. I'm still dry. That's a that's a win-win for today. <laughs> now appreciate the intimacy of that fish being so close to you right now. That's what it's all about. Oh yeah. Look at there. Yeah. We'll take it. We'll take it though. Beautiful smallmouth fish.
So at what point in time did you decide that you were going to do the majority of your fishing out of a kayak? <laughs> well, about the time I looked at the price of a ranger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I was in my early 20s. I, I bought one. There was a flyer for a little local kayak fishing tournament. And that kind of got me into it. Um, I think I spent like 800 bucks on my first fishing kayak. It was a used one I bought online. It's kind of taken off since. And it's allowed me to travel all over the country. I can handle it by myself and I can fish any water I want, which is really nice. You know, some of the small rivers and creeks, big water like St. Clair. You fish a lot of big water, don't you? I do, yeah, I, I absolutely do. Um, a lot of my tournaments are on, on, you know, giant bodies of water. There we go. It, it definitely, you have to really do some map study prior to jumping on a lake like this. We can't just run spots as easily. You're limited a little more on how far you, you're willing to go, and you, you got to watch the weather too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I've been in some pretty inclement weather on this thing. I would probably consider myself um, a multi-species angler with musky. Musky fishing is my passion, um, always has been. Oh my gosh! I grew up fishing musky, pike, walleye up north. Nebraska's not necessarily known for your bass fishing, but I'm very active on the national kayak bass tournament scene. And so I've been doing that for three years now. Active is one way to say it. Extremely successful is another one. I mean, you've won your fair share too, haven't you? I, I've had a pretty good year this year. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was really consistent last year. Um, I did win a local tournament last year and I had several top five national level finishes, but I didn't win a big one. And this year I won three, so that was that was kind of that was kind of a neat deal for me. So people who think okay, tur tournament style fishing in a kayak, how does that work? Because you you don't have a live well, you're not taking fish in, but you you do it on a different method than what most people used to, and that's a overall inches, right? That's right. Yeah, it's, which is really good for conservation because we do catch photo release on this little measuring board I have back here. You measure the fish, you've got a, a predetermined identifier, and that fish goes right back in the water. Gotcha. Okay. It's great for the sport, and it's great, you know, those fish go right back and they're not out of the water for a long time. Uh oh, here, I got a bite right now. This fish here is going to pull me out there, out to the ocean. Yep, they'll take you for a ride. <laughs> It's a good that, one here. That looks now. like a good one. It's a good fish. You might want to use the net on that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful fish. That's a 20, I what bet. Do you know? I think I just landed a four and a half pounder in a kayak. This might be a first <laughs> for me. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> this is a good fish here. And I tell you what, did you see that pull pull my boat? Yeah. I need to get out of your way here. No, you're fine. I'm, I'm cast I cast right behind you. Look how thick that thing is from the top to the belly. Yeah. Do really... you want to put it on the board and see how long it is? We can do that. that that's got to be a 20. Yeah, it's probably 20 inches, and I bet you that fish there is, is at least four and a half. Pounds. I say that's got to be four and a half. Let's throw it on the board real quick, and we'll see how long it is. So for a tournament, we'd have an identifier somewhere along the board. I usually strap it up here. Okay. But then what we would do, you take the fish. That's going to go right, yep, right at 20, like I thought. 20 inches. Yep, make sure the mouth is closed. Look how thick that fish is. So you would then take a picture of it yep. and it would immediately upload 20 inches. It'd be real time or do you do you get your data at the end of the turn? You take the picture and then submit. You can either submit it right then and there or you can wait. Some people sandbag. Or you sneak in about 60 yeah. inches where the bass saw them at the last second. Yep. That's a beautiful fish though. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's why Dale Hollow has a, a very special place in my heart. And I just, the first time I was on this lake, I fell in love with it. I think it was back in May a few years ago. There was, they were pre-spawn at that time, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. And gosh, it was just incredible. For someone who's from Nebraska, you do spend a lot of time in Kentucky, don't you? I spend more time in Kentucky than I do. I'm in Nebraska maybe just once or twice a year anymore. I'm in Kentucky and Tennessee, this part of the country, a lot. <sighs> Man. Did you get a bite? Right under the boat. Oh man. My line caught my rod right after him. I mean, that's why I don't ever keep my rods up front like that. <laughs> bad habit. Really bad habit. How many days a year do you think you spend on the water? Boy. I would say at least 300. 
<laughs> that, I'm not. I'm not joking. You're like, how many days are there in a year? I know. It's there's, there's 360 a something right. I'm on the water most throughout the year. It's every single day. Yeah. Oh my gosh. For at least a few hours. Maybe it's bigger than I thought. But it's what I do full time. So it's. Uh, they say if you if you love what you do. Yeah. Woo! Absolutely. Oh, look at him. Uh, oh, that's huge. 300 days a year. I bet you hold fishing license in at least eight states right now. Nine. Nine. Well, I've got annuals in nine. I just looked at this the other day. I think I've got 26 or 27 other ones that I've had just purchased licenses this year, <laughs> but nine annuals. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It is crazy, yeah. This is about ready to happen right here. Now we've got to pull one more off of this spot. We've missed several. Uh-oh. You kind of called that, didn't you? Yep. This one ain't quite as big as the last one. Pretty aggressive, though. I tell you what, these fish, man, they school up on the edge of these grass mats. You can catch good quality fish and big numbers of fish out here in the wintertime. Who would think in December is, is one of my favorite months to fish out here at Del Hollow is December and January, February. Well, I'd say we make a few more casts. We got so many spots, you know, we're a little bit less mobile, but we can hit more than one spot. Oh yeah. <laughs> Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here we have 10-year-old Bray Cimarosa with its first buck, and he took it with a crossbow in Pulaski County. Nice job. Check out this beautiful buck that was taken by Heartland Samuels. This was an eight-point buck that was taken in Nelson County during the youth weekend. This was her first buck. Here we have a beautiful buck that was taken by 13-year-old Gavin Frischie. This buck was taken in Bracken County during the youth season. Nice deer. Here we have 10-year-old Atlanta Caudell who took this very nice eight-point buck on the opening day of the youth season in Bracken County, Kentucky. Nice buck. Here we have Amanda Collins who got her first deer after two years of trying. This is a nice doe that was taken off her grandfather's farm in Mason County, Kentucky. Nice job. Check out the day that 11-year-old Chase Volkert had in the woods in Mackville, Kentucky. He got this beautiful 13-point buck and a doe. Nice job. Here we have Riley Volkert of Mackville, Kentucky. She got this nice doe while hunting during the youth season. Congratulations. Here we have Grace York from Glasgow, Kentucky, who caught her very first smallmouth bass while wading the Little Barren River. Nice job. Check out the smile on Nicholas Morgan He's holding his nine point buck that he took with a crossbow while hunting with his dad. Congratulations. Christopher Perry caught this beautiful smallmouth bass while fishing with his papa Larry. This fish was caught in Big South Fork in Stearns, Kentucky. Nice job. Here we have Ryan Asher with his very first squirrel that was taken on his family farm in Grant City, Kentucky. We are only halfway through the modern firearm season here in Kentucky. If you're planning on hitting the woods, be safe and good luck. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water. Did you know that Kentucky is home to the largest elk herd in the eastern U.S. with an elk zone twice the size of Yellowstone National Park? Look how big that animal is. I mean, this is just amazing. And we enjoy one of the most diverse fisheries in the country. Just ask Christine. Very nice. Woo! And by the way, Kentucky is known for being one of the top five states for trophy whitetails each year. Additionally, more than 100,000 Kentuckians have benefited from our conservation education programs like the Salado Wildlife Education Center, summer conservation camps, Good job. and our learn to hunt and fish classes. Or did you know about the 1.6 million acres open to the public? These are just a few things that Kentucky's Department of Fish and Wildlife have helped preserve. This is one of several we have on the Kentucky River. See, she's got plenty of room in that nest for chicks. Who pays for conservation in Kentucky? Well, 
Since the department receives no general fund state tax dollars, we rely on the sportsmen and women of the Commonwealth. He's been waiting years for that. So, if you enjoy Kentucky's resources, help us manage them by purchasing a hunting or fishing license today. You can do so by visiting fw.ky.gov.